Hi everybody, and thanks for joining us for this vlog. Uh, this is a very exciting vlog because I've always wanted to do a video up on Mount Lemmon. Now, my partner Zach and I recently met our friend Margaret. For the past couple weeks, we had been communicating with her because she had let us know that she knew a beautiful spot on the mountain where you can find some amazing medicine. So that's what today's vlog is going to be about. We're going to take a look and see what kind of medicine we can find up on Mount Lemmon. This is also, to make note, my first time ever mushroom foraging. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, and I will see you on the adventure. Greetings everybody and welcome to Powerful Plant Allies. My name is Jack. I'm up here with my friend Margaret. Hey there. Can you tell them where we are right now? Yeah, so we're right here up on Mount Lemmon, um, almost near the summit, just past Summer Haven here on Turkey Run. So yeah, we're gonna... Turkey Run. Turkey Run, okay. right? Yeah. And we're up here, we're gonna do some foraging. She's been telling me for weeks that she knows this beautiful spot up here, and I've been waiting for somebody to show me the good medicine spots. So <laughs> yeah. we're gonna go up here. We got some beautiful columbine right here. We got some flea bane. Already all this medicine around us. So we're gonna go adventure up the trail and we'll get some shots and see what we can find. We were walking along, we're like, what, 100 feet, not even 50 feet from the car. <laughs> and we find beautiful mustard right here by this flowing stream. Oh my goodness, amazing. It's like crazy, every time you come up here, right, it's like you see all these new things. It just, Mount Lemon blows my mind. It's so biodiverse. Amazing, yeah, and like the, the ferns. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see right here, there's a nice beautiful stream flowing down here. Just like the perfect, perfect habitat for good plant medicine to grow. If I was a plant, this is where I would be, for sure. <laughs> oh, all shit. right, let's keep going up. Take a look at what we found. Nothing, nobody that I want though. Look how fresh it is too. I know, right? <sighs> so soft. Oh my god, it's like Such velvety, yeah. <laughs> right? It's so velvety. We're hoping we're gonna find some reishi. Everything you could ever ask for is right here. I'm just gonna come right up here and, and just live. Become the woods bush doctor. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So big. We got some spearmint, some mountain mint growing up here on Mount Lemon. There's a whole patch of them, as you can see. Right by this beautiful flowing stream. So cool. Sit, cheers, bottoms up. Keeps your breath nice and clean. One of my favorites, mint. When I grow my gardens and stuff, that is one of my favorite herbs to grow. Just like warms the soul. Good medicine. So we'll have to come up here and make a mint video soon. We had some nice rain come through earlier. Everything's nice and moist. It's about 70 degrees up here in Mount Lemon. Down in Tucson, it's like 105. So the natives up here in Summer Haven, Tucson it is our safe haven from the uh, summer heat when you want to escape it. It's about 80 degrees up here. But it feels like you're transported back to upstate New York. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so will. here we have a base of a reishi, right? Yep, just harvested. Yep. Um, not sure by who, but someone's enjoying its medicine, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's being used for good. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> 
So the hunt continues for more reishi. Yeah. Let's see if we can find some. We got a couple more spots to hit too if, if this one was all hermined out. Sweet. No, they're not. They're not really that funny. You know, I'm just like, eh. But they're kind of cute to look at. Oh, yeah, look at him. He's just poking He's right just out. poking through. <laughs> I'm the plant guy that does the <laughs> mushrooms and stuff. I'd love to really dive deeper into it. Right, a whole other kingdom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a little. Look at that. Give it a boot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a friendly little. Yep. A little boot -boo. So, what do we have over here? Witch's butter. So, it's a wonderful emollient. Um, you can see here it's kind of taking over the whole log. But you can yeah. use it kind of in the same way as aloe vera. It's a great emollient for the skin. Very lubricating, softening, and moistening. Wow. It's delicious too. Um, some people eat it kind of like a wood ear. I don't Ooh. eat it though because I'm not a fan of wood ears. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but I've made this into like lotions for sunburn. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. There's something about being in the heart of the forest that's just so healing. When you open up your spirit. So the forest can do its magic, its healing power, ancient healing power. Magnificent. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. Eaten up by the bugs. They Found some more reishi. <laughs> the hunt still continues. We got some dried up turkey tail. by boiling it. Oh, yeah. um, looks like a slug's trying to get to it at this point. So it oh. might be a little bit past, but it looks rather fresh. Um, it has similar properties to like reishi and other woody shelf mushrooms. Wow. Um, but it's just not sought after. It's not quite as pretty. And it's not used quite as much. <laughs> but it's red full of velvet. like... Yeah, yeah. Red, uh, red belted. Red belted. Red belted, yeah. Red and belted. it's just got a lot of really useful polysaccharides, which may be helpful for things, you know, like splitting cells and cancer cells and stuff, yes. so. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's a good one. Okay, heck yeah. Yeah, that one's Look, solid. This is like a perfect log. If I was a mushroom, this is where I'd be. Right? Like, it's a great, great like spot. Like totally nice and <laughs> moist and, yeah, so yeah. cool. Do you know what these big trees are over here? Um, I think a lot of these are going to be, there's pine varieties, but these are Douglas firs. I, I was about to say, they're, they're firs, right? They, they are firs. I saw this their cones, the, so. Yeah, this is the fir belt up here. Wow. And that's why you get more mushrooms. Like nice. the soil's richer than the firs also. Oh, that's good to know. Interesting. They're actually from the decaying tree, so having the spores in the decaying tree taking over the tree saprophytically, like living off of it. Um, so, yeah. it's not like the ground mushrooms. So these are called elven saddles, and they're related to the morel. Um, if you can see, they kind of have a similar, I don't call it almost like a Swiss cheese yeah. um, vibe about them. But the elven saddles are really delicious. You can cook them up in like, you know, oil, butter, ghee, and they're just amazing. But, um, but these ones grow from a ground um, network of mycelium. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, Super how cool. cool. Yeah, the elven saddle, one of my favorites. Can I see one real quick? Yes, certainly. What? Yeah. Look at how beautiful. <laughs> oh know. my god. And they taste a lot like morels. Like they kind of have like that nuttier yeah. uh, like taste and vibe to them, but they're more common. Yeah. And they're easier to find. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There you go. Settle. Thank you. Oh my god, how awesome. Among all of these things, I don't think I'd find any of these bad boys. That's it. You learn something new every day, yeah. right? Oh wow. Uh, they're gonna really shrink a lot, so you'll eat like two bites. <laughs> two bites, but hey, <laughs> worth it, right from the earth. The delicacy, right? Yeah, it's like the woodier. Yeah. You know, a lot of um, like Chinese soups at like authentic yeah. Chinese restaurants, they'll have it. I love the woodier. I know you said you don't like them, but they are good when they're cooked right. But I have no idea how to cook them. I can't cook Asian food for the life of me. Oh, I got you. <laughs> so these are woodiers, and they're an absolute delicacy in Asian cuisine. Um, they're kind of similar to the, you know, um, witch's butter that we saw before, 
um, not quite as mucilaginous, not quite as emollient. This one here is a little bit more fresh. Uh, this guy. As we were literally just talking about this 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> That's a little bit more fresh. Oh wow! Yeah. It does it looks like it looks like waxy almost? Yeah, they're like almost jelly-like. But yeah, a lot of people really like them. I, if you're gonna eat them, I prefer to like dry them out. Okay. And then use them just because sometimes they have bacteriums, so you don't want to like eat them or cook them fresh. Makes sense. Yeah, most of these mushrooms the same way. I've always wanted to see them in the wild. <laughs> yeah, here they are. Dang, mm -hmm. look at that handful of wood ears. Right? Nice. Beautiful. And then we leave some for the yes. next. Always. Nature always gives us food, nature always gives us medicine. But it's very important to always remember sustainable harvesting, plant communication, communication with the environment. Uh, and I will say this in every video, past, present, and future, because I think it's extremely important and uh, shockingly not many foragers or herbalists really practice this, uh, which is something that I really would like to use my voice to promote, because it's very important. But being out here, seeing all this medicine, all this food, the fungi medicine and food, uh, there's nothing like it. And the best way to learn about this stuff is to come out here. Like Margaret, for me, I know nothing about mushrooms, so we just came out here and it was like, I would love to know some of the local ones at least. Uh, and now that I'm seeing them, it's just an eye-opener for sure. It was like that when I first started my herbalist journey too, about, oh, I wonder how much medicine is growing around, and then like everywhere you go, there's medicine. Uh, same feeling, just like so much gratitude for the earth. It's beautiful, so go out, but practice sustainable harvesting. It's very important, so. So right now we're heading to another spot that Margaret knows about, up at the Mount Lemmon Ski Lodge. So we're gonna drive up there and she thinks we might have some better luck up there. We got some cleavers right here. Yeah, we'll grab some of that mint on the way out. Cleavers. I always wanted to make a cleavers video, so now I have it in abundance up here on Mount Lemon. Life is everywhere. Take a look at the turkeys. So we're back over here by the Mountain Mint, and uh, after sitting with the plant for a minute, uh, we got beautiful validation and some beautiful permission to harvest some of her. Uh, now, a little note on sustainable harvesting. When you're harvesting and you only see a very small stand, maybe it's like, you see one yellow dock, and there's no other yellow dock in an area, you leave it because it's very important to leave that plant you could completely destroy a population of plants if you uh, just take one of them or if you take all of them and you're being very greedy. Now, uh, I practice uh, the native tradition of leaving something for the plant. Um, I brought a little bag of some dried organic tobacco, which I usually leave a plant when I harvest it. Um, or I usually will bring some sage or I'll blow some smoke and offer it up to the area. Uh, so we're out here, we're only gonna take a little bit, just a little bit, uh, what we were granted permission for. And I do have a plant communication video coming up, but uh, yeah, what do you say? Let's let's harvest this. Let's do it. Good stuff. So beautiful patch. You can see it's nice and healthy. It's nice and moist over here. Just magnificent, growing by some raspberries. We got the yellow dock. Just such powerful medicine in this area. And thank you for taking us out of here. Of course, it's magnificent. So you got a knife? I do. All right, let me lay some tobacco down. So we got some tobacco right here, and uh, we're just gonna sit down. Just sit with the plant for a second in silence. Just absorb the area and just be present with it. So thank you so much for your offering. I'm eternally grateful for your feeling. And thank you to this beautiful stand patch. 
for giving us permission. Oh, you may. And a little side note, you never uproot a plant unless you're using the root for medicine, okay? Only take what you need, and you want to cut at the leaf nodes, so then this plant will continue to grow. Cut. Voila. Beautiful. Out in the middle. Oh, you can smell it already, right? Oh my gosh, so fragrant. Magnificent, right from the earth. Beautiful. Not from an apothecary, not from the store, not from a little tea bag. <laughs> Right from the earth right here to see it growing in nature. It's just magnificent. It's such it? a beautiful it's thing. Like intoxicating. Right? To smell just being near it in its natural habitat and the intelligence that it just absorbs from this spot. You feel it, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah. And we've talked about this in other videos. Say you're harvesting mullen and the soil in the area is not good. Well, if you go 100 feet up, you might find some really well-nurtured soil, a lot of nutrients. Um, and soil does play a very important uh, aspect in plant like the medicinal components and stuff uh, so we're gonna do a bunch of soil videos too we got a whole bunch of things planned uh, especially for the Sonoran Desert series we're gonna talk mm -hmm. about the soil down there uh, but it's so rich like, you can feel it right oh my gosh it's so rich it's so rich here. and so dark it's like total vibration over here is magnificent so thank you mint thank you thank you Margaret mm -hmm. magnificent so and then you can continue to you can come back to this stand mm -hmm. it's another you know you don't just want to completely depopulate a plant from an area. So every year you'll come back and there'll be mint here and, and you form that beautiful connection and that beautiful relationship with the spot. Uh, it's so powerful, it's so powerful. Take a look at this monster mother mullen right here, second year. Look at all these beautiful flowers, medicine. If you guys haven't seen my mullen flower video or the mullen video, I'll put the links in the description below. Uh, but powerful lung medicine, beautiful and you can make an ear oil out of these flowers uh, my grandmother she had an earache last summer and I had made for the video I made some mullein flower oil and I gave her some and it really helped so beautiful 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 we're up here at Ski Valley on Mount Lemon and we're here going to the second spot so hopefully we'll find some reishi if not we'll see what we can find wild geranium So what do we have here? Uh, this is a coral fungus. It's uh, very small, I'm not gonna pick it. It's technically edible. I'm not the biggest fan, but you might be. Ah, <laughs> nice. But yeah, it's, it's very fun. It's so good. So we're here, and we came across a nice beautiful patch of wood sorrel mm. all over the place here. And Margaret here, this is her first time trying mm -hmm. it. It's delicious. So, packed with vitamin C, we're gonna have a nice wood sorrel video. Oxalis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People think it's a clover. It's not. It's beautiful. It's a lemony clover of deliciousness. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm like, what? This is a legit. So we're here and all I can see all over is just this beautiful patch of violet. And you can see if you have checked out my Herbs in Your Neighborhood Earth Day special from last year, we did violet uh, along with a bunch of other herbs on the East Coast. And uh, amazing. You can tell just like, love, the love vibration. Heart shaped leaves. And uh, those beautiful blue flowers, right? Oh my gosh. Magnificent. I've heard some people actually make candy out of them. Yeah, you can yeah. candy them. I like to make like a honey infusion. Our neighbor, she wants to collect some, she wants to collect the dye from them. She does a lot oh, of arts cool. and crafts and stuff. She's like, yeah, we'll come up here and flower some. I love it. So we usually flower in the spring and then in the fall again. Now Margaret took us to this new spot that she believed we would find a reishi at. And we were walking for about an hour or so. Uh, and we had no luck, so we were getting ready to turn back when uh, I stood there and I asked nature if at any point right before we turned back if you could present us with a beautiful reishi just to capture it and possibly harvest from it. Uh, if you could do so, it would be greatly appreciated. And what do you know, a few minutes after asking, look at what happened. Right over there. 
watch your steps. I told you. I said at the spot we decide to turn around at, we're going to find some. You may have to it. So watch this one right here, oh my God. this is a really cute little specimen. It's growing out of the decayed wood right here. And it's just living its best. It's actually really fresh. Oh my gosh. Oh, so cute. I'm looking so, at There's more up here. Like tip your hat to that, right? Right? Absolutely. Tip it. And you can see even on this, like, a slug's gotten to this guy, but oh. this is just some <laughs> drop decayed wood. And you can see the reishi's just, you know, eating it up. And there's the mycelial mass underneath. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Great. This one might be pretty good still, yeah. This is gorgeous. Like, you see how it's mostly shellac? And it, it hasn't really been too eaten yet. But if you're just going to want to cut it ever so gently, it takes a little effort. Yeah. Nice clean yeah. cut. Yeah, you want to get a nice clean cut, preserving the base. Now, can you freeze these? Yeah, you could freeze them. Um, you most you're gonna have better like drying it out, and then making a tincture with the dried mushroom. Wow! Just cutting off some of the dead pieces for you. I can see. Thank it's you so much. Fresh here. And you can just leave the pieces on the ground. Sometimes it'll even regrow. It'll just spread the mycelium. It's a little this one. solid. This one's a little gone, but yeah. it's, it's it's still usable for certain. You just have to cut off some of the schmutzy parts. Just nothing's perfect, right? <laughs> Nothing is perfect. But yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful reishi. All that good medicine used in Chinese medicine really frequency, frequently. Yeah. <laughs> frequency. The um, frequency the, of the tree right, gave no, us this beautiful, beautiful medicine. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nutty, I love it. Um, it's uh, known as the mushroom of immortality among uh, Chinese medicine. It makes a really great decoction and tincture. Wow. This is my first time holding oh, a reishi. Gorgeousness. This one's a trickier cut because of the way he's growing. It's up against the tree, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, kind of an easier cut, though. But yeah, it's kind of fun because you can see there's almost like this barky, toothy layer. Yeah. And then more of the spongy layer. But yeah, it's not something you'd want to eat by any means, but <laughs> definitely good medicine. Just good medicine. <laughs> Look at that beautiful, beautiful race. We're going to tincture this right yeah. up. Nothing will look more than smelling a race. Like, I don't even... I have so much reishi tincture at home. I don't need these are for you. I'm nice. like, just can't get enough just, of that smell. <laughs> no, really, if I could like permanently stick it in my nose. <laughs> and as you can see, as we're talking about sustainable harvesting, you always leave some more for others. Never, ever, ever depopulate a plant or a fungi from a specific area. Thank you, Mother Tree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No longer with us. But its remains give life. A slug's kind of getting to it, such as life. Um, but you can see that more than 50% is this white mycelial spore pad. That spore pad is like really not, not the medicine that you're looking for. And you really need to let that mature so it'll release its spores. You can see um, that there's some shellac like on the stem. But it really didn't have much time to mature or do much before this this slug decided to go for it. So you don't want to harvest it if it's just like a big white poof. Hey, it's medicine and food for them too, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's getting such good medicine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you can see someone harvested this guy right here. It's a pretty clean cut. They did it in a pretty ethical way. And this is the way you want to do it, right? Yeah, you want to leave some. Yeah, you're just going to want to cut it. You want to leave a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, you want to leave that base. Take a look at this guy right here. A pretty fair harvest because you're only going to get like a week or two's growth out of this. And then, you know, like the bugs are just going to go straight for it. Gotcha. But yeah, this is, it's pretty fair to harvest it. But say, I don't, percentage wise, I'd say if it's more than 50% red shellac, then you're good to go. But a lot of people harvest it when it's like half and half. Oh, wow. And you're just not getting as much good medicine. 
but you're not letting it really like sporulate as much as it could. So. And here's a good one of one that's turned, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This one was obviously a behemoth. Like, but yeah, this one's actually really nice. <laughs> I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get a little whiff of this guy too. Oh my uh, you know, like mushrooms have that certain smell to them. They do you know that what I mean? dewy, like freshness. It's just like nothing. Like uh, it. And racy scent is so unique. It's just Amazing. absolutely beautiful. Oh, so some of these. This one is kind of fun because you can see um, if you touch the top of this, yeah. you get all this almost like uh, this one specifically because it's right under another. Yeah. Um, it has this brown dust that's not dirt. That's actually the spores being released from this one. And this one had time to release its spore because as you can see, oh, it's over 50% wow. shellac red. There's no white banding on it. But yeah, now that's the spore. So they're going to just keep on spreading and oh. growing and for Beautiful. years and years. Thank you, Mother Tree. Right? Oh, Beautiful. yeah. Oh, yeah. <gasps> So beautiful up here, right up here on Mount Lemon, Tucson, Arizona. That's right. Come check it out. It's a, it's a hidden oasis up here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make some dry Always carry a little medicine patch of some. Uh, dried herb, tobacco, whatever you'd like to offer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be tobacco. Thank you. Aho. Very emotional experience when you uh, connect with nature like this. You really feel it. A lot of people who forage and a lot of people who uh, come out here and, and work with the plants. Something I think needs to be known more is the power of really connecting with nature and with the plants. So, you know, I sound like a broken record if you've seen all my videos, but uh, I'll continue to say that because it's so important. So don't be afraid to talk to the plants, to the medicine, to nature. and. Uh, don't be surprised if she replies back. Beautiful, like we were walking up this path. And we were like, you know, at the moment we decide to turn around, we're gonna find some nation. And that's exactly what happened. So we were meant to come out here today. We were meant to experience all the medicine that we did today. It was my first time mushroom foraging documented here. And uh, thank you, Margaret, for our host right here. Happy Get a shot of her. Give, give her the spotlight. Hi. She's our host with a beautiful California poppy <laughs> shirt on. And uh, we'll have her on again in future videos. But... Happy to be here. Absolutely. So thank you, guys. My name is Jack. This is Powerful Plant Allies. And I will see you next time in La Quête. Take care.